It is my pleasure to introduce Professor Arsha Utridurga of the Department of Mathematics of Indian Institute of Technology in Bombay. He's an assistant professor in, this, in, in the Department of uh, Mathematics of Indian Institute of Technology of Bombay. Uh, before he was a research associate at the Department of Mathematics of Imperial College of London. Uh, he was a postdoctoral researcher fellow at the University of Cambridge. Uh, he obtained uh, the PhD in Applied Mathematics at the Cole Technique in French under the direction of uh, Grégoire Allaire. He works in area of partial differential equation. The title is uh, of this talk, Elastic Cloaking Theory. Please. Okay, thank you very much. So I, I will begin. So I do apologize to the organizers because I have been <laughs> uh, very absent during the talks uh, this week. So I, I'm sorry about that. So. Uh, let me begin. So the title is Elastic Cloaking Theory. So see, most of us are fascinated by invisibility. So you want to make some yourself disappear or some object disappear from the view of others. So if you go to a magic show, so there they use some tricks to render some objects invisible. But it's usually a trick where they are trying to you know, fool you in some sense. But from a scientific point of view, there was a breakthrough uh, in 2006 where uh, there were these two papers. And um, yeah, it should be mentioned here that uh, the ideas which appeared here were already scattered in some papers which uh, appeared maybe a decade back. But this was uh, put into proper terms here in these two papers. So this work of Pendry and co-authors and Leonard, where they showed that it is indeed possible to theoretically, at least, to build some structures around an object so that the object becomes invisible. So essentially, their idea was as follows. And this picture is borrowed from their papers, the paper of Pendry and co-authors. And um, their idea is quite simple. So whether it can be done uh, you know, practically, that's besides the point here. But from a theoretical point of view, say you have this football and you want to hide it from you know, uh, people seeing it. So what you do is you coat that football by some object, okay, so some material, let's say, so that your electromagnetic waves, they don't penetrate this object or they go around this football and the observer, for example, standing here doesn't see the football here. So that's the idea, the theoretical idea here. And uh, this is a schematic diagram. So say you have this region, which is in orange, and you want to place an object there and you have an observer standing to the right here. So the light waves are coming from the left. And so they are bent because of some, you know, magic property in the blue region here. And the observer here doesn't even realize that there is something uh, unusual happening in this region. So that's the setting. And that's why it's called cloaking. So you are trying to cloak certain regions in, the, in your domain. And uh, invisibility because you cannot make out what is there in that region. Okay. So this term metamaterials is used for those you know, seemingly uh, difficult objects that you can find so that you can coat the thing which you put in this blue region. They are called metamaterials. Now, from a mathematical point of view, what is that picture representing? The one which uh, we saw just now. So when it comes to light waves, so you see light is helping us view the object, right? So when it comes to light waves, they're governed by Maxwell's equations. 
So here are the Maxwell's equations. Maxwell's equations has got these two unknowns. The electric field E, which is a three vector, okay? It's a function of time and the spatial variable. And the magnetic field H, again, a function of time and the spatial variable. It is a three vector again. So you have two three vectors and they satisfy these equations. These are system of equations. You are taking the curl of the three vector here. It equals minus some quantity mu times the time derivative of the magnetic field. And here the curl of the magnetic field equals some quantity called epsilon times the time derivative of the electric field. So these are the classic Maxwell's equations. And these coefficients mu and epsilon, they have a name. They are again a uh, like a three cross three matrix, this mu and epsilon. Mu is called magnetic permeability and epsilon is called electric permittivity. Okay, so uh, this is an evolution equation. So you, you know, assign some initial conditions and so on and so forth. But governing equations are these now. What's the idea that, you know, uh, in terms of these equations, what do we mean by cloaking? We essentially are asking the following, to come up with these coefficients, because these are the material properties, mu and epsilon. So we need to assign these uh, coefficients, mu and epsilon in these differential equations such that that schematic diagram which we showed, that bending of electromagnetic waves are actually achieved thanks to that assignment of mu and epsilon. Whether you can find any material with such a property, that we will worry about later. But from an equation point of view, we are looking at these equations and the question which was asked in those two science papers were, can you find these coefficients mu and epsilon such that that bending happens. Okay, so it will be made more precise. And as I mentioned earlier, that uh, materials with such exotic properties are usually referred to as metamaterials. Okay? Now, what are those magic parameters? So let us give a geometric setting, a simple geometric setting. It can have varied geometries, but now let us, to get a feeling of what cloaking is, we take a medium call it omega, okay, the standard notation for a domain, so omega. It has, it contains a region called D2. Uh, for all purposes of today, you can take B2 to be a ball of radius 2 centered around the origin. So you can take omega to be containing the origin, which contains a ball of radius 2 inside it, and there is a ball of radius 1 inside that. So there are this cascade of three domains here. We want to cloak objects placed in B1. So we want to, B1 is the region where we wish to hide things, okay? And B2, comp, the complement of B1 in B2, okay? The B2 minus B1, that region, we want to apply that metamaterial coat. Okay? So we want to assign values there of these parameters, the material parameters. So this is the geometric setting. So there's a domain omega, which contains a ball of radius two, and that contains a ball of radius one, everything centered around the origin. Okay, so take mu naught and epsilon naught to be the magnetic permeability and electric permittivity. I mean, these are just constants. Let us take them to be some constant values corresponding to some material, okay? So some constant values. And taking these as coefficients in your Mag Maxwell's equations, you can solve for the electric field E0 and H0, okay? So we are not addressing whether you can solve Maxwell's equations or not. We are just as, you know, taking it for granted that once we give a reasonable coefficient, you can solve Maxwell's equations and it will spit out a three vector called E0, which is electric field and a three vector called H0 which is called magnetic field. So with these two coefficients, you get these two vectors, okay, as solutions of these Maxwell's equations. So essentially, I'm taking two constant values, okay, constant coefficients, I'm solving Maxwell's equations. 
with some initial confusion. Now, the goal here is to build new magnetic permeability and electric permittivity co coefficients. We will call it mu CL. The subscript CL is for cloaking. It is to emphasize that this material is supposed to do the cloaking job and epsilon CL. Okay, so outside the ball of radius two, we will assign the same values as mu naught and epsilon naught. Outside the ball of radius two, it's the same as those constant values, mu naught and epsilon naught. And in the annular region, B2 minus B1, the complement of B1 in B2, we want to assign those magic parameters. We are not telling you what they are, but this is the goal. We want to assign some values for mu and epsilon in this region. And we want to solve Maxwell's equations because whenever we are seeing any object, we are essentially solving Maxwell's equations without us knowing it. But now let us call the corresponding electric field as E star and corresponding magnetic field as H star. Okay, so we suppose we have come up with that magic parameter mu and epsilon in that region. So we solve for it. Please note that in this assignment of mu CL and epsilon CL, we have not told you what is there in B1. Okay, that's a very important point to make here. We have defined a function, two functions, mu and epsilon, mu CL and epsilon CL. We have assigned their values in omega minus B2. We have also assigned their values in B2 minus B1, but we in this Whatever we are staring at, we have not told what the value these two are taking in the ball of radius one. Now, the whole point of cloaking is the solution to this equation. The assignment of these magic parameters should be such that your E star should be equal to E zero and your H star should be equal to H zero. Please recall that E zero and H zero are the solutions to the Maxwell's equations where you had the medium filled with material which has parameters mu naught and epsilon naught everywhere in the domain of mu. So this should be equal for every time t irrespective of the material parameters, material properties of mu CL and epsilon CL in B1. So you should be able to put whatever you like in B1, the solution to this differential equation should match with the solution to the earlier differential equation with constant coefficients there, mu naught and epsilon naught, for every point outside B2, outside that code. So from a math point of view, this is what we are asking. Is it possible to construct these coefficients, mu CL and epsilon C? Okay. So if there are any questions, quick questions, I can answer them now. Otherwise I can continue. So here is the setting. And in fact, in that those two papers, uh, the one with uh, by Pendry and co-authors and Leonard, they actually prescribe the these magic parameters for mu and epsilon, which do the job, which actually attains this equality, irrespective of what mu and epsilon are in B1. Okay. So from a math point of view, this is the so because story is about elastic cloaking theory. We will drop this thing about the electromagnetism because the cloaking theory kind of began with this, at least uh, in a more general sense. We asked this following question, what else can be cloaked? Okay, so light is a wave and we have seen that waves can be bent, electromagnetic waves can be bent, thanks to this result of Pendry and co-authors and some other works, so that the observer cannot detect objects in certain regions. So can cloaking be translated from this electromagnetism setting to other areas of wave physics, say sound waves, acoustics. Okay. So yes, you can indeed do the cloaking there. So that is acoustic cloaking. Now we ask this question. The second question is, can this metamaterial ideas, okay, assigning, you know, coating certain regions by these materials with these exotic properties, 
can it also be taken forward to physical systems where this phenomenon of waves are absent altogether for example you take static mechanics there are no waves there okay so that is elastostatics you study elasticity systems or you take thermodynamics like the heat equation okay or study heat heat problem like the poisson equation there are no waves present there so can you still do this meta material ideas there then what do we mean like in the absence of wave behavior what it means to cloak like what's the mathematical question we are asking for that we illustrate uh, through pictures here so let's take an isotropic homogeneous medium okay by that we mean there is a medium and we are looking at certain property of the medium okay and by isotropic we mean that it is same in all directions essentially and homogeneous means it is constant everywhere so isotropic homogeneous medium m now you see we are trying to phrase this question of what it means to cloak when there is no wave behavior when there is no waves present what it means to cloak so you take this medium m which is isotropic homogeneous medium you take a copy of the same domain okay this medium m but you put a defect call it d okay there is a defect here now you want to from the theory of cloaking you want to cover this defect by some layer call it e and i make an observer stand at the same point in the medium okay so in this isotropic medium somebody stands here and make some observation and at the same point in the copy there is the second observer who makes another observation okay the whole idea of cloaking is the assignment of this coating should be such that both these observers make the same observation irrespective of what is there in this defect so that is what we mean by cloaking okay so see here there is no need for any wave as long as you are like clear about what is the material property and what is the observation you are making you can pose this question of cloaking now here is a table they have made so let us look at a context and a governing equation there and what are the material properties and what are the observations okay so we have already seen this the electromagnetism setting there the governing equations are maxwell's equations material properties were permittivity and permeability and the observations were electric field and magnetic field there those were the solutions to those governing equations okay so we were making the same observations provided we assign those magic parameters in the annular region or the coating whatever now this was the setting of electromagnetism now let's go to thermodynamics in thermodynamics you study heat equation they are the governing equations and in heat equation you have these coefficients density heat capacity and conductivity these are the material properties that is the property of the medium and then the observation you make is that of temperature field that is the solution to the heat equation next the context is elastostatics there the governing equations are lame system or they are also referred to as navier system this is in the linear setting by the way and the material property there is an elasticity tensor and the observation is displacement field okay so whatever we have to manipulate is they are the material parameters and we should get the same observations just think of that picture you know the medium m the defect d and there is a layer e okay? and if you are working in thin plate theory there the governing equations can be linear kirchhoff equation and material properties are called flexural rigid rigidity and there is this flex flexural displacement that's the displacement uh, uh, orthogonal to the plate okay that's the observation so this is a fourth order equation this linear kirchhoff equation okay this is second order this is a parabolic problem with second order elliptic part and so on now and you can of course write many more contexts 
and uh, write down the as long as you are clear about what's the governing equation, what are the material properties, if you can actually manipulate them, and what are the corresponding observations, you can you know augment this table some more. Now, before we give a a glimpse of what we have done in elastostatics, that is for the Lame system, we will take a little detour to address electrostatics. Okay, so electrostatics is a familiar field for all of us who do PDEs, where we encounter the Poisson equation. So let us try to understand how one builds those coefficients, those magic parameters to attain cloaking. Okay, so let's take a little detour into electrostatics and whatever we have done in elastrostatics in the context of Lame system is you know, essentially redoing it in a different language okay, and for a system of equations. Essentially. Now, let's begin with electrostatics. So what is the unknown in electrostatics? It's the electric potential. So it is a scalar function u, which is a function of the x variable. So x is the domain omega. X is in the domain omega. So you take this Poisson equation, divergence of uh, this gamma X times the radius of U equals zero, and you assign some value of your electric potential on the boundary, okay? So gamma is called uh, the conductivity. So this is an N cross N matrix. So, so omega is a subset of Rn. So, and it denotes the conductivity of omega. Now, we had mentioned about this isotropic homogeneous. So if you, if you are said to be isotropic, if your gamma x looks like gamma naught of x, some function of x times the identity matrix, and it's called homogeneous if it's constant. Okay, uh, mu naught is constant. Uh, the gamma naught is constant, apologies. Otherwise you call it anisotropic, okay? So if it's different in different directions, you call it an isotropic, and this gamma. So when you are studying this electric potential in the context of electrostatics, you encounter uh, this thing called D to N maps. It, they are called Dirichlet to Neumann maps. They are, the idea is very simple. See, we all have studied that if you give, if you assign F, the boundary condition for this Poisson equation in, in some nice enough Sobelov space, you are, you have a unique solution to this problem, U. Okay, and this D2N map is just saying that. So it says that if I assign F on the boundary for U, we know that there's a unique solution. Okay, we are not bothering right now about what is the functional space and all that. Okay? So you assign the value of F uh, you assign the value of u on the boundary, there is a corresponding unique solution, u, to this Poisson equation. And you can talk about this, con this fellow, gamma times gradient u dot m, okay? So if gamma were just identity, this is just the normal derivative of u, okay? Uh, so this is the map. So you give me f, I solve this Poisson equation, solve for u, then I compute this quantity on the boundary for every point on the boundary. So this is the Dirichlet to Neumann map, okay, corresponding to this conductivity coefficient. And in order to emphasize that there is a conductivity matrix here, uh, we have put a subscript gamma here. So lambda subscript gamma of f. So this is a very defined map. N is this outward unit number, the standard notation. So there is this D2N map. It's also referred to as voltage to current map in the engineering literature. So you put an voltage on the boundary, you are measuring the current, this gradient U dot M. So we have this D2N map, what it means to cloak in electrostatics. Let us try to understand that. So you take a domain omega, fill it with conductivity equal to one, okay? So you take the corresponding D2N map. So you have now the Laplace equation, minus Laplace and U. Laplace and U is equal to zero, and then U is equal to something on the boundary, okay? So you can talk about the D2N map for that, and you call it lambda 
subscript home. Okay, home for homogeneous, not for homogenization. And you take a subdomain D in Omega. The question we are asking is, is it possible to prescribe a conductivity which has this structure? Outside D, it has to be some gamma tilde. And inside D, it can be any gamma one. Okay, we are not prescribing gamma one. We are only prescribing gamma tilde. That is outside D. Such that the D to N map corresponding to gamma CL, okay, that cloaking parameter satisfies this value. So you give me any voltage on the boundary, I will get the same current measurement as the homogeneous medium. Okay, so the D to N map as a map, as functions, they are the same. Gamma home is the same as, uh, sorry, lambda home is the same as lambda gamma CL. Okay, I hope the setting is clear. We are trying to prescribe this value. Okay. And that should hold irrespective. This equality should be true as an equality between maps, irrespective of what is there in gamma one. Okay, there is gamma one, there is say gamma one is equal to 10. Okay, you prescribe something here, and then you change, you have a change of heart, you change it to 20. That prescription you, which you had given to 10 should not change now when you change gamma one to 20. It should be the same prescription, but you should have this equality of maps. So that is the goal. How does one go about doing this? So the observation which one has to make in order to realize this goal is quite simple, very simple in fact. And this is just the usual weak formulation which we all study and a simple change of variable. Okay, so let's do that. We all know when we are given the second order elliptic equation, you know, you multiply by test functions, you throw the derivative onto the test function, and this is what we get, right? So this is the term which we get out of the Laplacian, and this is the boundary term. So, and essentially, you know, when you get gamma times gradient u dot n, that is our notation, uh, that, uh, that lambda gamma f, that's our notation for that quantity, I've just written that. This is just integration by parts, okay? After multiplying our equation by v, okay? Uh, second order, um, this electrostatic equation by v and uh, doing an integration by parts, we get this equality. Now, the chain of variable which I talked about, this is the simple change of variable. So we have a domain omega. You take a C1 diffeomorphism. So this function f, it maps every point in omega to some other point in omega. So it maps omega to omega, and it's a C1 function. The main point is it fixes points on the, on the boundary. So if I pick a point on the boundary, that map goes to the same point on the boundary. You're not changing points on the boundary. So it's an identity when you restrict that function on the boundary. So you have got this C1 function, which maps points in omega to some other points in omega, but fixing points on the boundary. Using this function, this diffusion, there are many such functions, right? So you take one such function, you make this change of variable inside this equality of integrals. Okay, in this weak formulation, you simply make this change of variable. Y is equal to f of x. When you make that change of variable here, so what is our notation? This DF transpose, that DF is the Jacobian matrix, okay? Uh, because F is this uh, map going from Rn to Rn. So DF is an N cross N matrix. So that is the Jacobian matrix. And the ijth entries are DFI by DXJ. That is the ijth entry. So this is just a simple change of variable. Whenever the gradient hits the function u, okay, so you pick up a transpose of the Jacobian matrix. Okay, this is just chain rule. You wherever there is gradient in x, you pick up uh, the transpose of the Jacobian matrix times gradient in y in the new variable y, and uh, u star is our notation for u evaluated at f inverse x. Okay, u star y. Uh, is just that. So, like 
expand. And similarly here, gray, whenever there is a gradient, you get the transpose of the Jacobian matrix times the gradient. We are not done much here. And then uh, there is this determinant of the Jacobian which comes. Okay, that's the volume element. Change. And u star of y is simply u, the original u, the poten electro electric potential evaluated at f inverse y. This makes sense because f is a map taking points from omega to some other point in omega. So this is a valid definition. Similarly for v, v star. So please remember this. And the boundary does not change. The boundary term has not changed because the boundary points are fixed. Nothing happens to this term. So essentially what we have, we have shown, so this fellow here, the next, what do we do? We throw this transpose of the Jacobian matrix to this side. It becomes the Jacobian matrix times gamma times the transpose of the Jacobian matrix. So that is again, a n cross n matrix acting on a n vector gradient y of u star dotted with gradient y of v star. And then you, this is just determinant of the Jacobian is just some number. You throw it uh, in the denominator there. So that's what we have written here. So essentially, that simple observation in the weak formulation by making that change of variable using that diffeomorphism, it showed us the conductivities gamma of x, the original conductivity matrix, and this new conductivity matrix, which we call push forward of gamma. That's just a terminology but it has got this expression. Jacobian matrix times gamma times transpose of the Jacobian matrix divided by the determinant of the Jacobian matrix. So if I want to evaluate this new matrix at a point Y in omega, I have to first know the corresponding point X that was mapped by F. So you would take X, uh, which is just F inverse of Y. Then you evaluate this fellow, this matrix. And that is the assignment of f star gamma at the point y. That is the way we should understand this. Our little observation there was that these two matrices have got the same D to N maps. That means that, uh, that lambda gamma is same as lambda f star gamma. You see, cloaking is essentially this, right? We should be making the same measurements, same observations. So, for an appropriate choice of f, we will build this coefficient gamma c. So now we will give the recipe like the which Penry and co-authors gave for the function f. They actually cooked up a diffeomorphism function, uh, diffeomorphism of omega going to omega. And uh, so what they did was they took this domain omega, they blew up a point inside that domain. So let's take, you know, for all practical purposes here to understand. So take omega to be centered around the origin and omega to be a ball of radius two. And uh, f of x they took was this one, okay? What this function does is it blows up, okay? This is the expression. This is not defined at the point at the origin. This is not even defined at origin. So it maps zero to B1 essentially, right? And it maps B2 minus the origin to B2 minus B1. So that to that annulus, it is mapping the entire point, this single point, the origin to B1. And it maps the ball of radius two minus the origin to the annulus. Okay. See, this fellow is not a smooth function when you approach zero. So at origin, this is not smooth. And that leads to trouble. If you cook up this cloaking coefficients, because you know, well, once you give F, we know what is the cloaking coefficient. Now it's simply that push forward of the identity. If we are trying to uh, compare it with the homogeneous uh, medium with uh, conductivity equal to one. So push forward of the identity. So let me just quickly go back. So you see, push forward of whatever you are trying to compare it with. So push forward, if uh, my gamma is identity, I have to take push forward of identity. It is just this algebraic expression. You have to compute this quotient and this matrix essentially. So, and that uh, will be, and uh, 
gamma seal as i was telling it has got singularities when you approach the boundary of beta and uh, that singularity is essentially uh, is helping you to do that you know the cloaking happen but unfortunately there are no naturally existing materials when i say singularities they are taking the values infinity okay and uh, so there are no naturally existing material which actually take these values this very large values for the conductivity so there was a remedy which was proposed this is called regularized transform instead of blowing up a point what you do is you blow up a ball of radius epsilon okay we are all familiar with this trick so now you blow up a ball of radius epsilon to go to ball of radius 1 and you know the annulus b2 minus b epsilon will go to the annulus b2 minus b1 and this fellow is a smooth function everywhere okay and outside the ball of radius 2 you take it to be identity so this is the map and if you compute again it's the same story you have a function which maps the boundary onto itself boundary of omega onto itself you compute its jacobian matrix okay once you compute that jacobian matrix you have a recipe for computing the push forward of any coefficient in the diagram so you can do that and in this setting of the regularized transform the cloaking coefficients that you get they are not singular they don't take large values i mean of course with epsilon going to zero they will be shooting up to infinity but for a fixed epsilon which is non zero they are still finite values okay and if you were to take epsilon is equal to 0 in this expression you get back uh, that uh, expression of penry from the previous slide that function that diffeomorphism they took okay now enough of electrostatics uh, if there are any questions here i can answer quickly uh, because in electrostatics we will be doing essentially a similar recipe but for a different equation. now in elastostatics what is done now it is the displacement field okay so u from omega to rd so this is a vector valued function and it solves uh, this uh, differential equation it's a system of equations okay so how do you where this c is a fourth order elasticity tensor and this gradient of u is a matrix now u is a vector gradient of u is a matrix n is the usual normal vector and g is the traction data it's like you know when you are studying the poisson equation that's the neumann derivative so think of it like that so what is this fellow in the parenthesis it should be understood like this so it has got uh, it is a matrix this uh, fellow c acting on gradient of u it is understood like this Okay, C I J K L. There are this. It's a fourth order tensor, so there are four indices, and you sum over K and L. That is the way you understand this guy, and then you take the divergence of that fellow. Okay, so you have an equation for every I essentially here. So there are d such equations, and as I was telling, this C here is a fourth order elasticity tensor, and it satisfies you know this is the stand like the ellipticity condition uh, so for you take any symmetric matrix a i have two minutes see yeah two minutes oh yeah quickly i will finish so you act c on a and then you act on a again so this is the standard ellipticity condition so this is under these assumptions you can actually show that there is a solution to that elasticity system Okay, there is a unique solution to this problem in some quotient class, and this elasticity tensor C, for any typical material, it satisfies certain symmetries. Okay, so these are called major symmetries. So C I J K L is simply C K L I J, and they are also called minor symmetries. Okay, where I J K L are just indices. So you have this. so please make a note of these things major and minor symmetries uh, 
And in the context of elasticity, when I say that a medium is isotropic and homogeneous, I mean the following. So here the delta ij is the standard Kronecker delta notation, okay? So Cijko takes this particular form where lambda and mu are the bulk modulus and the shear modulus. These are just names, okay? And if they are constants, they are called homogeneous, okay? Lambda and mu. Uh, lambda is also referred to as the first Lamy parameter. And if I take Cijkl to have this particular structure and that uh, system of equations which we wrote, it looks like this. Okay? And where this E of U is the symmetrized gradient, which has got uh, this expression. Okay? Sorry, I'm running quickly here, but the ideas, please uh, note that it is similar to the elast electrostatic case. So in cloaking in elect elastrostatics is essentially the form. So the objective is the form. Give me a delta. We, we will construct a fourth order tensor, which is going to do the cloaking job, which has the following structure. Outside the ball of radius two, it is some fourth order tensor C0. And in the annulus, there is some magic parameter. We have called it D delta. And in the ball of radius one, it is some other uh, fourth order isotropic tensor, call it C1. So where C0 and C1 are just this isotropic fourth order tensor corresponding to different Lamy parameters. So C0 corresponds to lambda naught and mu naught, C1 corresponds to lambda one and mu naught. So the construction of D delta should be such that the distance between these two solutions. So where U home is the solution to the elasticity problem, where you fill the entire domain omega with lambda naught and mu naught. So that's U home. And U delta CL is the solution to the elasticity problem with this cloaking coefficient. So just forget what is written here, this H1 off. So essentially we are saying they are closed in some norm and they can be bounded uh, by some function of delta, which goes to zero as delta goes to zero. So that's our notion of cloaking. And um, we told you, right? So when you make the change of variable inside uh, the weak formulation, there's a similar calculation which you have to do in elastrostatics. So you take a fourth order tensor, you take the corresponding elasticity system. And if I make this change of variable using this invertible map F, okay, which fixes the points on the boundary, it satisfies this new elasticity system with a elasticity tensor, which we called by F star C, like the push forward, and it has got this expression. Again, there's a recipe. You have to simply plug, once you know what is F, this map F, you plug it in this expression, you know the corresponding fourth order tensor for this new equation. By this transformation invariance is such that this U and V, the solutions to these two problems, they match outside the ball of radius two. That's the beauty here. And um, the only problem, however, is that I mentioned uh, this notion of minor and uh, major and minor symmetries, right? One of the symmetries will be lost. The minor symmetries will be lost when you do this push forward. So there is some trouble because there are no naturally occurring materials with uh, such properties. So we actually give a remedy for that, which I'm not going into detail here, okay? So before I finish, I will give some uh, open questions in this invisibility cloaking. Okay. So, of course it is because there are no physically existing materials with these extraordinary properties. You need to put in assemblies, whatever materials you have in some particular structure so that as an effective property, you get these metamaterial properties are close to that. So here is where the theory of homogenization comes into picture. Okay, so that's that. And whatever we discussed here, it was all linear models, but you can of course do this for non-linear models. I mean, it needs to be done. Uh, there are some results which are available for non-linear models, but uh, quite a few are open. And a rigorous result where you do everything in terms of certain Sobolev norms, that is still an open question as far as I know for the wave phenomena. And then, I mean, this is, is it possible to cloak gravitational waves? So here you have to 
because you see we are doing transformation in space but when you study gravitational waves you have to study field equations of einstein there even the space is you know there is the curvature which is part of the equation so how to come up with this transformation media theory for uh, this very geometric equation and uh, with that i thank you for your attention thank you very much for your clear talk you have some any question yes uh, uh asha can you read the, the chat uh, the okay quickly i will go ayo this one there is a question in the chat can you read uh, okay let me just okay where okay okay there are some questions here uh Okay. Reference. Okay. Oh, Daniel, are you aware of some application of cloaking ideas in homogenization in fluid uh, dynamics? Example. Yeah. So you can, of course, ask. Okay. Good that I brought up this uh, slide here. You can, of course, ask a similar question in the context of fluid equations. Okay. Uh, but um, yeah, there have been some attempts in the engineering community. Uh, where because the there the application was to safeguard your coastal region you wanted to attenuate water waves coming and hitting your coastal region and you know eroding some of the regions there so there have been some attempts where they keep some rubber tubes in some particular structure so you attenuate water waves but there has been no uh, like theoretical work as far as i know and uh, in perforated domain again uh, i don't think anybody has attempted this but that's an interesting question where you ask this question that uh, in certain regions you if you can manipulate viscosity of your fluid can you actually avoid certain regions or something like that and uh, yeah professor donato i forgot to add references so before i hand over this uh, slides to the organizers i will add references at the last page so that you can have a look at it okay no other question thank you very much again oh thank you thanks very much